God, oh God, that every spiritual ear gates will be cleansed, will be purged, Rabba Kushi behind. Everything in the ear gates that dwell in the earring of God's children, God, He could have all seen. We ask that the ear gates be cleared in Jesus' precious name. We ask that the eye gates will be cleared in the name of oh, Jesus, Rabbi Kostia, we ask, oh God, that our senses will be cleared, Rabbi Kostia, we bind and prohibit every witchcraft manipulation and manifestation. We ask that the entire line on the Rabbi Kostia and the people, the students today, Kostia, will be accelerated into a new in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Holy Spirit, Rabbi Kushara, that where you are, there is liberty, and we are in liberty all. We thank you for the glory of prophecy, the spirit of prophecy, Yeshua Amashim. Ah, yes, and yes, Yeshua, yes. We will not commence without the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ah, we are the prophetic edge will be set Rabbi Kushi We are the spirit in the prophetic God He could the name We are the spirit of irresecting and irresecting and use in the prophetic because we are not in the Lord because you are the God of truth and you sees where we are what we will be and you know where we are what we can know as a follower and the true spirit of prophecy tonight, the true spirit of prophecy, he can live a great fire, he can have a little bit of a fire, we ask that as he begin to activate us, Father, kill the good fear, he can have a little bit of fear, I ask that every single manifestation, every single Prohibited tonight, Jesus. I come against the octopus and the spirit in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. We ask, O God, hallelujah, that as we come in this fashion, you will begin to smell us up. Yes, God, yes. In the name of Jesus, we ask for the spirit of holiness, righteousness, truth. We ask that we will be pliable. We ask that we will be teachable, Father, in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of deception that normally stops blessed people at the head of ministry. We ask God that we will not judge us by our past, Kido Kushaya, because the prophetic ministry of evil are not under the Old Testament divine. We prophesy judgment and doom and doom upon people. Yes. The prophetic ministry is for exaltation and edification and the building of the body so that we will be only furnished not lacking anything. Oh. And so far we ask that every spirit that is not of God, he will see 
um, offices of the prophetic. There are three aspects of the prophetic in the New Testament. There are three aspects of the prophetic in the New Testament. They are the prophetic activation, prophetic gifting, and prophetic office. And I repeat, they are the prophetic activation, prophetic gifting, and prophetic office. What is prophetic activation? In prophetic activation, we find that all can prophesy. And I repeat, somebody's talking? Yes. I just want you to listen right now, please. In prophetic activation, we find that all can prophesy, all can hear from God, and share what they hear for their own benefits and the benefits of others. In, new, in the New Testament covenant, prophetic ministry has a different parameter of sharing what you have heard because God wants us not to do it now in the New Testament as all it was done in the Old Testament paradigm. So the difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament is that in the Old Testament you have a lot of prophets that were doom prophets. They shut down this, they curse this, and in the New Testament the, 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 the focus of the prophetic is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. If what you're speaking as a prophet as a prophetic person is not for edification, it's not for exaltation, and it's not for comfort. You have a misconception of the paradigm that we're in. If you notice the difference in the New Testament, I'm not saying that because the Word of God says that the New Testament covenant of the prophetic is geared towards edification, exaltation, and comfort does not negate the fact that God will oftentimes speak a word of rebuke, judgment, if constantly given word to rebuke, to, to, to exalt back into righteousness is unheard, not, not accepted, then eventually... Um, God will bring judgment because you are walking out of the will of God. So God will bring judgment. But does the New Testament prophet has the right to bring judgment and doom and gloom? Further on into our studies, you will learn about that. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 31, and I'm quoting from the King James Version, the Bible says, For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all all may be comforted. So you see the difference now in the New Testament paradigm. For you may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. That's the purpose of the prophetic. Okay, so we're going to look at the prophetic gifting. In advance, prophetic gifting, we identify people in the kingdom of God and the body of Christ that describe themselves as prophetic, and others would describe them that way as well. These believers are endowed with a prophetic character and a prophetic personality, which become the template for all God integrate them in His purpose. And I repeat, the prophetic gifting allows you to identify people in the kingdom of God and the body of Christ that has described themselves as prophetic and others will describe them that way as well. These believers are endowed with a prophetic character and a prophetic personality which becomes the template of all God integrate them in His purpose. In Romans 12, verse 6, King James Version, the Bible says, Having then gifts different, 
Having mm-hmm. done gifts different, according to the grace mm-hmm. that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. The prophetic office is different from just having the gift of prophecy. Moving forward from prophetic activation and prophetic gifting, we come to prophetic office or the office of the prophet. Prophetic office is one of the prophetic ministry that has to do with leadership or mentoring. And that is also functioning in the purpose of God. Someone who is called to the office of the prophet is used by God not only to speak the word of God in prophecy, but also to mentor others, helping them to hear the voice of God for themselves. That's what we're doing, activating who they are in Christ for their own personal benefits and for the benefits of others. Shall we bless the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. In Ephesians 4 verse 13, the Bible says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfect of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of statues of the fullness of Christ. And that is why when you're in a ministry, you have to keep your eyes open. You have to be looking out for the order. There are principles and protocols that surround the kingdom of God. An effective ministry does not comprise only of just the prophets and the apostles. The fivefold ministry is comprised of all the different component, all the different op- uh, 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 operational gifting, all the different offices. And Christ does this as a structure, as a template, as a format, as a pattern, as a principle, and a protocol for the church to follow. He first called the apostle. The apostles are the sent one. Then he called the prophet. The prophet are the spokesman or the mouth peace of God. Then he called the evangelize, the evangelist, to evangelize. Evangelist is a soul winner, not that all the others are not, but the evangelist gift is to go and preach the word of God. And then the pastor is the nurturer, is the, is the one that cares, tend over the flock. And then you have the teacher, people who are possessing supernatural ability to rightly divide the word of truth with accuracy, with, 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 with excellent and they have such a great anointing to, 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 to discern rightfully what God is saying. They have received of the Lord the teaching anointing. Prophet exemplify how to hear God's voice and how to share what they hear with a view to restore people back to breakthrough, restore people back to the way of God, the purpose of God for their lives, and to restore them back to healing. The prophet's goal is perfecting believers, nurturing them in the full statues of Christ that dwells within them. In other words, no prophet should be, you know, promoting you to depend on them because that is idolatry. 
a prophet is a, a man or a woman of God who, who don't point people to themselves, but rather point people to God. Develop in that individual the ability to hear God, to hear God for themselves. Hallelujah. Shall we bless the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. 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 The prophet goal is perfecting, nurturing. Remember, we're called for edification. Yes, for example, there's a mystery that God speaks. The prophet must have the ability to bring clarity, precision, edification. The prophetic is not something that should be concealed. And I and, know and, and when you speak it out in the multitude of people, there must be an interpreter. The interpreter must bring edification. We must know rightly and clearly what the Lord is saying to his church, to an individual. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 The prophet goal, I said, I have to place an emphasis on this. The prophet goal is to nurture people, help them to develop their own dependency of hearing on, of, of the Lord. They do not foster outward dependence upon others, but inward dependence up on Christ Jesus. Remember, Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Upon him is built up all the prophets and the apostles. Anything out of that jurisdiction is diabolic. It's in error. A prophet who always allow any individual or group to become dependent upon them rather than dependent upon God is within themselves a, a, a prophet that is in error. They have missed the fundamental part of their calling, the calling of God upon their life. A prophet role is to bring attention to God, hallelujah, and not to themselves. Shall we bless the name of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Are you a prophet? Are you a prophet? Do you feel that there's some prophetic um 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 unction, inclination, inspiration? Are you called to be a prophet? The fact that you have come online tonight is pointing me to one thing. I am of the understanding that one, you love the prophetic. Two, you desire to be a prophet. And three, you need to know which era you are called to effect if you are indeed called to the prophetic. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, Amen. 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 Why should the prophetic be of importance in this time? From Genesis to Revelation, we have seen the different the different thing that God do. Uh, when God did not have a spokesman back in Genesis, even Abraham, God began to give prophetic dreams. God began to give prophetic words. So God is always in speaking term with humanity. But God needs oh. men and women to stand in the gap, and to build up the edges because people are going into diverse traps and temptation. Some of them don't have the ability to cipher out what is happening. And some of these people, whether saved or unsaved, does not have the ability to hear God for themselves. So God needs a man. God needs a woman. God needs someone who will proclaim his word to his people on his behalf. So God is co-laboring with us. He's partnership with us. Kibokusia. A perfect example was when he came on the hurt. Ah, he alone did not do the work of redemption preaching the gospel. He called for himself the 12 disciples. They were 70 in number and some turned back. But it mined down to, 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 to the 12 apostles. He sanctified them. He opened up their understanding to the scripture. He blew on them the Holy Ghost. He imparted on them something that came from him in the person of the Holy Spirit, Kusha 
Adaba. Because before Jesus went up to heaven, he only had the Holy Spirit positionally. It was not dispersed toward all the nation until the day of Pentecost. Kubo Kusia. And you find that in the book of Acts chapter 2. Now, after the disbursement of the Holy Spirit, people did not have to wait on one person. The Holy Spirit was going to the Jews, and the Holy Spirit was going to the Gentiles. So to become a prophet, you need Robokusande to understand that you must have a dependency up on the Holy Spirit, who is your teacher and your role model. He is your mentor, Kushadapa, Kurubuhusi. He will take the things of the kingdom and make them clear to you. He will bring back to your understanding the things that Christ has spoken concerning you, concerning the church, and the nation as a whole. Shall we bless the name of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. So it's very common um, to want to wanna know. Um, like, like, like yesterday, I was here and God did something very profound. I was struggling with going to the nation. God has been telling me to go to Jamaica to preach in Jamaica what I need to do and different parts of the world he has been sending me. But it was not until he said, I am moving you now. From, you're not a church prophet, you're a, you're a prophet of nation. Then I need to understand my position, of, position in Christ so that I don't stick in an environment that my assignment is over. Kabu Shande Kusi. So you must depend on the Holy Spirit. Remember, you are called by God, ordained by God, anointed by God, empowered by God for service. Hallelujah. So when God began to tell me now to look into the nations, He showed me things that is going to happen in Colorado and other things that is getting ready to happen in our, in our nation. Then the Lord said to me, I want you to accept your mantle for nation. Hmm. Shall we bless the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Responsibility. Uh, I want to make this very clear. Uh, uh, God will never speak a word that he does not have a witness. Hallelujah. The Bible says on the account of two and three witnesses, let every word be established. But when God says to me, I want you to mentor people, I want you to activate people and release them in the prophetic, it is because there is an uprising of demonic power as we're approaching the last days. So if you will be in a cute situation where you can't get to run to find a prophet to speak to you, but because the Holy Spirit is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omnipotent, all-knowing, all-seeing, everywhere at once, God, you can ask Him to direct you and to teach you in the way that you ought to go. So you need to be activated, to hear the voice of of God in you, that you'll be able to convey a message to yourself with clarity and precision and to others. Give the Lord a praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Prophets as a responsibility to be very humble. Humility is of utmost importance. You cannot be a prophet and believe that you know it all and it's all about you. God displayed the characteristic of a humble servant. Prophets are called to serve. Even though we're serving you with the word, we're washing the saints' feet. Ha, it should be a delight to be able to convey to the saints with all humility and simplicity what the sovereign God is saying to his people. Prophets must display the characteristic of someone who is humble. Man. Oh. For the purpose Amen. of this course, people of God, I want you to accept the responsibility to hear the voice of God and to 
to share what you hear to others. Mm-hmm. And as you go into different dimensions, specifically the activation of the prophetic, and some of you who choose to go in further courses with me um, to learn about the prophetic office so that you can be a prophet that is pruned, uh, mentored, cultivated, and equipped to mentor others. God wants you to do that's very important to God right now that you don't only come into this course as a spectator. If you come in as a spectator, then you will not be activated to your full potential. When you accepted Yeshua Mashiach in your life, you play a participatory role. You participated. You act out on your faith. So it is with the prophetic. You must participate. So it is with the gift of speaking in tongues. Some of you speak... um, in tongues and you understand what you're speaking and and that is your spirit being edified. Paul says, I speak in tongues more than all of you all. Some of us have diversity of tongues. Some of us just have one tongue language and we need us to go deeper and, and get it more cultivated. But whatever the case may be, people of God, one of the things that God wants us to do as believers is to be able to, to, to be a recipient of the word. He did not call it to confusion. He said, if you are evil, know how to give your children good gifts. Huh? Then what says your heavenly father? So if you said, Father, I am here, I want the Holy Spirit more, I want to be activated more, then the Holy Spirit will not deny you of that. Because it is the will of the Father for you to operate into this dimension. Amen? Amen. 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 So we want to learn, um, there's, there's a way to demystify the prophetic. So the, all that we're going to do through this, this course that we're doing is actually demystifying it, breaking it down, mm, giving it a, a better a, a definition that everyone can grasp. Because our goal is to make sure that everybody understands the prophetic um, office, the prophetic activation, what it is, what kind of paradigm you're in, under, you're not under a religious um, paradigm of superstition that will blind your prophetic gifting and you can be activated and become dormant. Because when you start to flow in the prophetic ministry, uh, you're not love, a loving person, you're not forgiven, you hear, you, 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 you function out of ears, and now what does say the Lord? You're actually cheating yourself. When I just started out in the prophetic ministry, uh, uh, God told me that any time you start to prophesy out of ears, you are actually cheating your gifts. When you speak out of just dependency upon God, there's room to grow. Because God will not give you a word that is in error. But when you speak out of error, then you are cheating your gifting. It will make you undeveloped, uncultivated, and you will operate in error. Always try not to speak out of any error. Speak what does say the Lord. Speak it in love. Speak it in all humility and simplicity. As unto the Lord. Shall we bless the name of Jesus? So what I sense in my spirit, I sense some people are further in the prophetic than they think they are. Hallelujah. Rules of the prophetic. I want to I give a brief um, rule in the prophetic. Never you try to prophesy in an environment that you did not receive the grace to prophesy or the pastor did not give you the okay to prophesy. Don't go into people's territory, use up authority because you're prophetic. That is prophetic madness. There are principle and protocol. The Bible said line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, here a little. So if you come into an atmosphere, no matter how prophetic you are, God shows you something because you're his prophet and the Lord does nothing in the earth except he reveal it to 
his prophet, his servant, according to the book of Amos. So not because God shows you this does not mean that you have the right to speak if God wants you to speak. Because what you're delivering is God's word. God will make room for what you're carrying. He will release you to speak what does say the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go now into the um, the activation itself now. Praise God. I want to say many believers, many believers are most confused in this era. They are seeking confirmation. This is on your, your, your course. You can take your documents now and go with me. They are seeking confirmation to ensure that they are called to the prophetic ministry. The scriptures quote in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knows you. God knows you and sanctify you to be a prophet to the nation. This simple means believer must trust God for the perfection of their faith because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. God is the one who has called you and has given you all spiritual blessing in heavenly places through Christ Jesus. Once you're sure of who you are, and who you are, then you can count the cost and decide whether or not to embrace the spiritual battles that come with the call and also with the territories. There are many practical ways to confirm if you are called to the prophetic ministry. When you are called to the prophetic people will begin to identify that prophetic grace upon you. Here are a few tips to identify if you are called to the prophetic ministry. In 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 13, if you believe that you have a prophetic gift in, there are some levels of uncertainty that comes with that that are are some signs that will assist you to identify it and to move forward many people just get conscious i don't know i'm having prophetic dreams and most of the things that i dream is accurate although i distinctify if i'm indeed called to this so we're going to go through some 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 little keys and nuggets for you to know but you should every one of you should get in the bible and study first corinthians 14 in its entirety. These are some of the keys. Number one, you may have a desire for God to use you to bring a message from Him that will encourage your leaders or your church body. Number two, if a person is in trouble and need guidance or to connect with God, you find yourself wanting to pass on an encouragement an exaltation or edification concerning God's plans for that individual. There are other keys we can use. You always get in dreams and sometimes you when you when you have the dreams you're saying God is like deja vu. This is like deja vu. Just a couple of days ago I had the same dream and it, and, and it's now manifesting. You may have a chain of thought and something come to your mind and your spirit, you're there thinking that it's your mind when actually it's the Holy Spirit impressing that on your mind, on your spirit. And then you begin to see these things unfolding and you say, my God, I was just thinking about that. Those are little keys to show you that you are indeed carrying a prophetic unction, a prophetic grace. You are a prophetic person. Shall we bless the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another way you can find out, you pray in a prophetic way. Some of we are not like God by fire, God by fire. You're actually praying out what is happening in a person's life. 
these are other keys to find out. So, for example, you don't know anything about my problem. And you said, Sister Anna, pray for me. And I start praying for you, but I start eating specifically in prayer what is actually happening in your life. That is also a way to find out if that you are prophetic. After praying for an individual, they will often respond by saying, you are right on target. Or your prayer was exactly what I needed. Or some of them will say, oh, did you know that? Because you are prophetic. The Holy Spirit in you is drawing out what's going on in that individual life. But instead of just prophesying that yada, 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 you are actually praying out the prophecy. That is calling prophetic prayer, prophetic prayers. Are you understanding me so far, saints? Amen. 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 Yes, some people don't have the prophetic like like how I have it and other people, but you are able to prophetically pray. Yes. Father, I just touch and agree with Sister Marcia. I see that this is happening, Lord. I pray that, you know, you just pray out instead of Christ prophesying to. It's still prophetic. It's called prophetic praying. When you are called to pray for an individual or a geographical location or for your church, you sense the Holy Spirit directing your prayers about God's purpose for a situation. That is how you pray prophetically. That's how you know that you are prophetic. That's how you know that this is not my mind. This is God. I am carrying an accurate sensing ability, seeing ability, hearing ability, and that is people who are prophetic. I am telling you, if that's how you're functioning, you're in the right activation course. You just need to be channeled into the place that God has called you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You can readily quote a Bible scripture if you're not praying. So, for example, that person is going to a trial, and when you're when you're when you're praying, you just find yourself quoting Psalms 91 or, 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 or Isaiah 43. When you walk to the water, it shall not be flood over you; the fire shall not burn you. And you find yourself quoting scriptures that are in correspondent to the particular issue that that person is going through. It's corresponding with that. Hallelujah. That's all you know that you're prophetic. When you're prophetic too, you can use a different thing to correspond to a particular issue. You can use, sometimes the Lord will give you pictorial views like a flash. Some people call it, um, uh, some people go through trances, some get a pictorial um, painting and, and, and pictures of, you know, for me, I, I, I see a screen. For me, it, I get words, I get telephone numbers, I get, it it, it with different, different people. So God will use different things as a symbol, different things that are symbolic to what he's trying to convey to you, not only by audible speaking, not only by your sensing, but in the sea of acoustic, there are various things that he can use to bring a message unto you. He said unto Jeremiah, what's he is thou in Jeremiah chapter 1. And Jeremiah said, I see a seat in pot. And God said, Thou seest well. So after you're called to the prophetic ministry, you are, are, are just, maybe you're not called to the office, but you're just a prophetic person. Then God will take you on what I call a personal training. That's the activation that he did. So we're going to turn our Bible to Jeremiah chapter 1. My God in Zion. I, I, sense I, I want to make sure I have time because next week I want to make sure we get time to activate some people every week. Every week persons will be activated. Amen. And um, I want you to know that this is a liberty all. There's no room for error here. Uh-huh. I want you to know that this is an atmosphere that is one that is conducive for what you're carrying. So you don't have to feel, you know, cute or feel intimidated that maybe when I get activated, what if I don't hear the right thing? What if I'm saying the wrong thing? 
just like when you became born again. You have to take your baby steps. Mm -hmm. After a while, you get more cultivated and developed. We need some of us who just got the baptism of, 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 of the Holy Spirit. We speak like blah, 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 and then after a while, we start to go deeper and get more mature and develop. So it is with the prophetic also. You, so, so when you, we're going to talk about fluency and accuracy um, as we go along. But don't take it for... Um, so don't don't be hard on yourself. Don't 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 you know criticize yourself and don't trust you know not trusting in the God that is in you. As I said before, He will not give you a serpent for a fish. So we're going to read from verse two of Jeremiah chapter um, chapter one, and the Bible says. To whom the word of the Lord came in the day of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the day of Joiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the coming away of Jerusalem, captive in the fifth month. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I form you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctify you. I ordain you a prophet to the nation. So I just want, I'm going to go down a little bit more, but I just want you to know that when you're called, why many people get confused is because I said some of us lack mentorship. Nobody is telling you specifically what you're called to do. When God called Jeremiah, in the text that we just read, he told Jeremiah specifically that he had called him to be a prophet to the nation. So that will take away all confusion when you know specifically what is your God ordained called. Amen? Amen. 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 Does that make sense? Amen. 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 I don't want to be an usher when God called me to be a prophet to the nation. It's not pride. It's knowing who you are. Amen? Amen. 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 Then said I, Ah, Lord, this was Jeremiah respond to God. Ah, Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a, a youth. But God said to him, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all whom I sent you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. So that shows you that after Jeremiah was called by God and he answered the call, then God informed Jeremiah that he was a prophet of nation. Then God put the word in his mouth. Aha. Uh -huh. And that's why when Jeremiah said, that was Jeremiah looking in his own abilities and saying, God, I am but a child. I'm a youth. How can I do this? And God says, say not that you're you, because I am the one, I am the one who's going to put the word in your mouth. I am the one that's going to send you, Jeremiah. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then the Lord had to ensure that it's prophet. Huh. would be loyal to him because sometimes you know prophets are not given messages that people like like for example you see someone practicing uh, closet homosexuality and, and you are a prophet and God show you that is that some things that God shows you is not for you to go and speak and so in Jeremiah's case Jeremiah were, 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 were called to a people that was very rebellious. And God said, do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. So prophets will find themselves in predicament that the word that you want to convey, it also will threaten your life. And that's why we need the wisdom of God and the Spirit of God. 
And that's why you have to be empowered, ordained, anointed, and sent by God. Because when you are sent by God, then you have the protection of your Father. You're not going out on your own. You're, you're being sent by God. And when you're sent by God, then He will deliver you. He said to Jeremiah, be not afraid of their faces. Now the next thing God did, after all of that gets settled in Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah to put forth his hand. No, God put forth his hand, God Almighty's hand, upon Jeremiah's mouth. And he said, Behold, I put my word in your mouth. So prophets must speak the word of God put in their mouth by God. They must not speak their own words. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's why prophets yes. must stay away from gossip and irises. Because yes. when you do that, it contaminates your perception acoustics. Yes. Yes. And you cannot clearly hear what God is saying. Yes. You have to, no matter what you hear, you have to go and cleanse yourself so that yes. you don't judge people and characterize and criticize them by what you heard from an yes. ear saying, not yes. necessarily what the Lord is saying. Yes. Yes. Oh. Hallelujah. For example, there was a pastor long ago in Jamaica that got caught in adultery and uh, it was a big disgrace all over. And he, he migrated to U.S. and he had a dynamic ministry and he was still falling into sexual sin. But the thing about it is that God has moved him along. He has repented. God has, whatever he and God deal with, God has dealt with him. So now he's no longer at that level. So say, for example, you come now and somebody just tell you something about the man. You don't know what the man and God had discussed. You don't know what, what's going on with him. David sinned with Bathsheba, and God forgive David. Hello, somebody? Amen. Hello? It's very important that you don't carry message to people out of heresy. That is the biggest thing I want to challenge you, young prophets. Never you say things out of heresy. Go to God and get the clear message undiluted from the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I see the man still actively he is in Florida, he lives in Florida, but I will not say who he is. And I see all the prophets I used to know from Jamaica going to his church of worship. And I and I said, God, what is it? This man was caught in this and that and the Lord shut me up. Because the man has repented. So who am I now to, to go and add him? Am I God? Amen. 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 So the Lord put his word in Jeremiah's mouth. Because God prophet must speak the word of God. Yes, then God says, I am giving you jurisdiction, jurisdictory authority. I'm giving you power. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10, he said, See, I have this day set you over the nations. Because that was what God initially told him. Before you were formed, I ordained, sanctified, consecrated you, Rabba Kusia, to be a prophet to the nation. Jesus. And God come back down into chapter, into verse, into verse 10 and says, I have set thee this day over the nations. That is getting authority from God. I wa Listen to me, prophet. I want you to say after me, that is getting authority from God. That, that is getting authority from God. 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 So when God gives you power over nations, nobody can stop you because you're not on your agenda. Your undefined agenda from the kingdom of God. Yes, amen. amen. I'm giving you this day an authority over nation that is superior to their authorities. In the name of Jesus, I am also giving you authority.
ready over kingdoms. Rekebosa. Remember the other day I told you about the seven kingdoms. I tell you about the God's kingdom. I tell you about the animalistic kingdom, the angelic kingdom, the automatic kingdom, the, 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 um, the, the flowers and the tree kingdom. I told you about the atmospheric heavens and all the different kinds of kingdoms. But God gave his prophet a judicial authority and jurisdiction over nation and over kingdom. One to root out simply mean anything that I remit in heaven, you remit it on the earth. Anything that is not of me, don't allow it. Rabakusanda. I am giving you the authority, prophets, to root out. When you root it out, you pull down anything that is not of God. Then you destroy it and throw it down. Ramakusaya. Because I give you my authority. And after that, he said, don't just try, just don't pull down my prophets. The authority in you is not only to destroy, but I want you to make a life. I want you to build. Anytime you destroy something that is illegal, hallelujah, something that is illegitimate to my standard and my way of doing things, after you eliminate it, then I want you to impart and impute and build up what I want in that space. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Then after that, then God put Jeremiah through a training process. Because God wanted to train him privately so that he could display him publicly. Hallelujah. Let me repeat. As a prophet, you must be trained not only by going to seminaries and reading books and going to workshops and going to conferences and all the mentorship that you you, you will acquire. (laughs) The greatest mentor you have is Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jeremiah was not going to any prophetic school of the prophet. This was God himself training Jeremiah. And the Bible says, God says to Jeremiah, What seest thou? What, move on, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And he said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. So that shows me that God trains the prophet. The prophet has to develop accuracy and precision. God said, look, my prophet, what did you see? Then Jeremiah responded by telling God that he see an almond tree. And this is the reply of the Lord. Then the Lord says, Out of naught calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all families of the kingdom of the north, says the Lord. They shall come and eat set in a throne at the entrance of the gate of Jerusalem, against all its wall and around all its city. And I will utter my judgment. Prepare yourself, Jeremiah. Shall we bless the name of Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God has to prepare you. You cannot go out there and don't know what you're doing. There are two things to keep in mind when discussing the ministry of the prophet. Every saint, he or she, grows in Christ to become a vessel that God can use to the world. And what do I say? When I, what, what does this imply? Various times will come when if you don't have a connection with God, you're going to walk around in confusion, and that will open the door for false prophetic people to come and lay their hands on you and release on you something that God did not intended. Who am I talking to? Because you don't know for yourself. Amen? You need to know for yourself. 
Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about attraction to the prophetic ministry. It's also one of the reasons why you know that, you know what? I really love the prophetic. I love to be in the company of people who hear what God is saying. Some, or oh, when I'm in that company, I, I become alive. Something in me just starts to, 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 to act. Activated. I want to mm. prophesy. I want to be used by God. I feel I need to be in the company of people like that. If you're having that <laughs> sense, or you're feeling that you're geared towards that, then you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're indeed called to the prophetic. So this is a question that I'm throwing out there. Are you feeling an attraction to the prophetic ministry? Amen. Yeah, yeah, amen. 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 Do you acquire a keen interest in the prophetic? Amen. 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 Do you have a strong urge to be in the presence of individual that flows in the prophetic? Amen. 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 Do you exhibit a feeling of excitement and becoming enthusiastic to amen. hear God's voice, eager to amen. express amen. the word of Satan? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you desire to Amen. understand and interpret what God has shown you in dream as well as to hear Amen. His voice with more Amen. precision and clarity? Amen. 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 Then guess what? You are hooked. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have uh, enthusiasm to want to read up on the? You just want the prophetic. Sometimes you, you know, and, 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 and I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw something out. You know, this is not in our list. This is just coming from your prophet. Do you see sometimes God? I know that prophetess has to do her thing, and you know. But when I'm around this prayer line, when I'm around people who are prophetic, I just feel that this is where I belong. Do you see that way? Be honest. Hallelujah! Yes. Yes. Glory to God! Oh, yes. Jesus! Thank you, Lord! Is that what I just received from the Lord? He said, there are people under you right now. There are people that we are going to flow in the Elijah anointing. Oh, <laughs> 
clearly mm. and precisely. Shall we bless the name of Jesus? This is all. Awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody need to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost said, Marcia, you shall be used on the radio. As I said to Jeremiah, pull down. God says, I'm sending you to do the same thing, but you will do it in the mantra of grace and mercy and love, because I am a God of love, says the Father. We want to go back into our lesson, Holy Spirit. Sister Marcia, God wants to use it. He said, tell her I'm bringing her on the radio. I have a lot of things for you to do in my kingdom. And do not know the call. Do not know. You don't need man's validation. Huh? Because even some of who you think that they are well authentic, watch, watch, watch God, God is going to do. God is bringing some new prophets, some new vessels to the front line in this hour of Christendom to take territories and to build back the walls that has been broken down by the end. And bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Activation to prophetic ministry. I ask you certain questions and you answer. You answer correctly because that is what happened to people who are prophetic. I used to walk from one place to the other because I cannot find a group of people that will that will satisfy me in the in the prophetic. I mostly would found people that are geared towards the carnal the carnal way of life. So when you're prophetic you be, you find that you have this insatiable hunger to hear the prophetic word of God to active to be activated. Praise the Lord. Second Timothy two six second Timothy one verse six. You if you are motivated to learn about the gift of prophecy and how to use it, it is a very, very, very good thing. If you find yourself reading and buying books and other materials that are geared toward the prophetic ministry, it's good. Those are motivational ways that we learn about the prophetic. There are some of the ways you will be able to identify if you have the prophetic calling in your in your life. And then we are going to pray. Up every, if you notice how I do the activation differently, every time we cover something, I like to pray the activation prior. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we have one, two, three activation prior points. I hope everybody is ready. Mm-hmm. Amen. Pray after me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Say it loud. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I ask of you, I ask, I ask, I ask of, of you, you to activate, to activate, to activate every inoperable gift in me. And in the name of Yeshua Mashiach. In the in the name of Yeshua Mashiach. Father. 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 Bless me. Let you have blessed me, me with all spiritual gifts. With all, with all spiritual gifts. In the heavenly places. In the heavenly places. places. To Jesus Christ. To Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. I ask that you activate. I ask I that you activate, activate, activate the spiritual gifts. The spiritual gifts. That I have received, that I have received from the heavenly places. From the heavenly places. After me, my father, my father, my father, more closer. My father, my father, my father, my father. 
It takes me deeper. Take me deeper. Take me deeper. Activation. Into the prophetic activation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We're not getting hungry, people, but to my father, my father, my father. My father, my father, my father. Take me deeper, Lord. Deeper, deeper. Take me deeper, Lord. Deeper. Deeper. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to ask a question. Can anybody briefly tell me who is a prophet? Do not cheat by looking on your paper. You must have an understanding since we have begun today. Who is a prophet? Do not cheat by looking at your paper, please. Amen. I need someone. I'm going to call Sister Ingrid. Who is a prophet, please? What is your understanding of a prophet? Prophet is a person that called by God. Yes. On his behalf. Good. Sister Marcia, who is a prophet? A person who is called by God. And God is called. I don't want you to repeat what Sister... Um... No, no. That's what, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yes, but there are many other ways. So give me some... I'm going, I'm, I'm going into work right now. And, and, the, and the man's son is here. So I can't even talk. <laughs> All right. Sister Jessica. Sister R. Deanna. Alice. Who is a prophet? Sister Jessica, are you there? Pastor Glenn Appear, who is a prophet? A prophet is a, a vessel called by God to deliver the word, the word of God without black faith in black and white, and who will stand against corruption, wickedness in government, in places. No, you did not to read from the paper. No, 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 I'm not reading from the paper. I'm not reading for the text. Because all that you said is, that, is that's, that's what we do. <laughs> because I've been, yeah. I, listen, I wake up since morning, 2 o'clock. This morning early, I've been studying this until 1 o'clock today. Yeah. No problem. So, so <laughs> give me again a brief example of who, who is a prophet. <clears throat> huh? oh. Go ahead and tell me again who is a prophet. Which is Rick? Go again, go, ahead, go again and tell us who is a prophet. Who, me? Yeah, I was saying that I don't want person to look on the paper because from no, no. we started um, earlier on, then I'm sure you okay. must have in, in yourself, you know, an example of who a prophet okay. is. So can you just briefly tell us? A prophet us? is a vessel of God, a call by God to deliver God's word, to say it in black and white without mixing, and who is to speak against wickedness and corruption in government and in places, even in the churches, where things is not as God has ordained it to be. Wonderful. Yeah. Sister Mother Ayat, who is a prophet, please? A prophet is one who hears from God accurately oh, and delivers the word accurately, just as God. God gave it to them. My yeah. God. Awesome. That that one knocked me again. Can you just say it one more time, please? <laughs> a prophet is the anointing. Can you say that? Can you say a prophet is a? Accurate. A prophet, a prophet is, is a person who hears from God, from God accurately. And deliver the mm -hmm. word accurately. Jesus Christ. If I could close out tonight, that is what I would say. Mm -hmm. A prophet is someone who hears from yes, God, God accurately Accurate. and mm -hmm. deliver accurately mm -hmm. what God is mm -hmm. saying. Hallelujah, mm -hmm. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. We read that in Jeremiah when God asked Jeremiah, and Jeremiah would accurately say exactly what God shows him. So that is the template of a true prophet. Amen. Sister Kamara, who is a prophet? Sister Kamara, are you on? Okay. 
Sister Evelyn Bacchus, oh, who please. is a prophet? A prophet is a person that the Lord chose that person, give that person dreams, and whatever dreams the person get, sometimes the dreams referring to the person and identifying the person where the prophet said. And the prophet has come with a dream. But remember, the prophet have to work hard too. The prophet have to listen to the Lord and say exactly what the Lord said. She brings it to the person. In Jesus' name, amen. That is very good, description of a prophet. Amen. Very, very good. Mr. Bacchus, let's hear from you. Who is a prophet based on what you've heard today? Yeah. Go ahead. You want to talk? A prophet is, is, is someone that... You're too far away. We can hardly hear you. Yes. Yeah. Talk. A prophet is... Close your eyes and think. All right, while you are thinking on your answer, um, Sister Michelle Malcolm, what is a who is a prophet or what is a prophet? A prophet is a person that is called and sent by God, and um, you not always used to the mode people. Of God. And uh, I think the Greek word is prophilo. Like, I don't, I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, prophilo. We don't reach that yet. What did you say? The Greek word is prophilo. Yeah, we don't reach uh, there yet, but that's, that's what it is. Yeah. 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 And it's the person who is sent by God. It was the mm-hmm. whole piece of God, in other words. Awesome. That's exactly God. what a prophet is. Mm-hmm. Sister Althea James, what are your understanding of a prophet and who is a prophet? The mouth piece of God. Okay. Um, a prophet is uh, a chosen one, chosen by God to, my God. Mm-hmm. to send, to speak his word actively. Yes. Speak his word. Um and um, as you said earlier, um, you don't not a false prophet that's given mm-hmm. <laughs> um, fleshly words in his flesh. Yes. You don't give fleshly words. You only give accurate words and actively words that God has given you to give to a specific person or a, a chosen person or someone. Exactly. Precisely. Yes. yes. Awesome. Jesus. Brother Leonard Watson, what yes. is your understanding of a prophet? A prophet is someone used by God to communicate with his people um, accurately. Wonderful. This is awesome. Mm-hmm. Brother Henry Taylor, what is your understanding of who, who is a prophet? A prophet is someone that sent from God to, to deliver his word as he was giving, giving it to him to deliver to his people. Awesome. That is exactly and precisely why I'm doing this way. Every one of us must have a basic understanding of who is a prophet. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, Sister Karen Rayfield, what is your understanding of who is a prophet? A prophet is someone that was chosen by God. He named them from birth, and he he knew that that was their calling. Someone who sees or has vision in their dreams that means something. Someone that prays. Um, they speak the word in prayer that's directly affecting someone, speaking into someone's life or directly affecting their, whatever they're going through, where they pray for someone and their prayers are accurate and on point. My God. You said it all. You said it all. 
That's exactly how we distinctify who is a prophet. So from your worksheet now, it says, A prophet is one called by God to deliver his messages to the people. True prophet will stand up against the workers of iniquities, like what we do when we come on the line the other night when we were under so much confusion, the workers of iniquity. God will use his prophet to stand against the workers of iniquity. There are a lot of biblical character. We have Elema in the book of Acts. We have Simon the Sorcerer in the book of Acts. And the apostles have to stand under the anointing and declare their work has come to a perpetual end. So God will use the prophets against the workers of iniquity where no one else will, prophets will. Prophet will answer the call and rise against corruption. They address wickedness and corruption in government, churches, and in their communities. Jeremiah 5, 1, 5. God called Jeremiah to the prophetic ministry as a prophet to the nation. And he tell him that before he was born, all of that we read, God speak about overthrowing certain things as he continued to train Jeremiah in order to develop fluency and accuracy in his prophetic ministry. God said unto Jeremiah, What seest thou? Jeremiah answered and said, I see an almond tree. God replied by saying, You have seen well, for I will hasten my words to perform it. There we see the prophet called, instructed by God to deliver his messages to the nation. A prophet must hear God with accuracy and precision, and they can convey his message accurately, just like what we just spoke about. Let us look at the training of Prophet Samuel. In 1 Samuel 3 verse 4, and the King James Version I'm reading from, the Lord called Samuel and he answered, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You call me. And after a few more attempts of Samuel running back and forth, Eli, which was more matured in the prophetic, perceived it was the Lord who was calling to Samuel. And the reason why Samuel had that struggle is because the young lad did not yet know the voice of the Lord. So the first thing God does to his prophet is to train them in hearing, activating the voice of God in his servant. Shall we bless the name of Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. In my pursuit, it was the Lord who was calling Samuel. This is very important to the prophets and the prophetic people. They must deliver, develop a keen sense it is so imperative that you develop this keen sense of hearing God that when some intruder is coming to speak like God in your ears, you will know that that is inaccurate and that's not of your Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let us look one more time at... um. Going on further, I said that Samuel, per- Eli perceived that God was calling Samuel. That shows us that it, t- it is in stages. Look how many times Samuel has to go back and come back. And then when he was assured that it was not Eli who was calling him, but it was God, then he'd he, he be still and listen. And God came and shared his secret with the young prophet because God does nothing in the earth except he reveal it. I want you to hear me. Can you repeat after me? God does nothing. God does nothing. In the earth. In the earth. Except he reveal it. Except he reveal it. To his servant, the prophet. I need you to say one more time. God does 
Nothing. Nothing. In the earth. In the earth. Except. Except. We will feel. We To his prophet. To his prophet. In the name of Jesus, say it on your own now. In the name of Jesus. Say it on your own now. God does not do nothing. Nothing. And he will be revealed to his prophet. In the name of Jesus. I want you to say it again. God does nothing. God, God does nothing. God does nothing. Without the feeling of the earth, he reveals it to his prophet. Oh, my God and my Father. My God and my Father. Oh, my God and my Father. Huh? Your word says. Your word says. Your word says. Amos 3 and verse 7. Surely the Lord will do nothing. Will do, will do nothing. nothing. But He will feel it. But He will reveal, will reveal it. it. It's, it's secret. It's a secret. Unto a servant. Unto a servant. servant. The prophet. The prophet. The God. God. The God. Feel your secret. Reveal your secret unto me. Unto me. Unto me. Unto me. Unto me. Unto me. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Reveal your secret. Reveal your secret unto me. Unto me. Unto me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Because it was a secret that God has. God okay. took Samuel in a rapid preparation, mm-hmm. told Samuel the secret, a divine message that what God is getting ready to do with the house of Eli, mm-hmm. you find that in First Samuel 3, 1 to 12 mm-hmm. and to 15. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot be a prophet and you're not hearing God. That is that is serious thing. Yes. God mm. wants you to hear Him. Yes. And if you are not hearing Him clearly, prophet, then it's you need to get down on your face. Because mm. I want you to know there are a lot of voices. When you're called to the prophetic ministry, you have the realm of voices. The realm of voices, and the realm of voices is where you hear your voice, God's voice, and another voice. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to distinctify which one is God, which one is you, and which one is the devil. Amen. Because all the voices speak in your voice. Hello? Amen. 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 Anything is speaking into you, it's speaking in your voice. Am I talking, are you hearing another voice? Oh, my God. No. And that is why sometimes when you hear that voice, you wonder, is this God or is this me? Hello, mm-hmm. someone? Amen. 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 So you need to distinctify which one of the voices is God. That's the realm of voices. Every prophetic person go through that. Sometimes you get so confused, you start crying because you don't know which one is you, which one is God. Is this you, God? Give me a sign if this is you. Am I communicating? Amen. 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 Because the voice that you hear, it comes in your voice. But what you don't understand, that even though it's your voice that is speaking, it is the God in you that is speaking. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, the Holy Ghost just dropped a revelation. The Holy Ghost just said, that is why when we activate people, we are activating the God in you. So activation is not for sinners. Amen. You have to be born again. You have to receive Christ. Kidebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebebeb
Mm. Any sin on his loss. I know you are the new man. Mm. So when we activate you, we are speaking to the Christ in you. Yes. Hallelujah. When we activate you, we are pulling and unlocking and causing you to access the God that is in you. You're not going outside to get anything, oh. What you're getting is already in you, oh. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We're activating the Christ in you, so stop looking on the outside. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. The prophet must display certain kind of characteristics in the prophetic. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, Lord. Some prophets have different kinds of characteristics. Ah. We have a prophet that when he curses you, you are cursed. That is Bela. That is a wicked prophet. We read about him the other night. Bela. David was a prophet, you know, but he was a psalmetic prophet. You have different kind of characteristics in the prophetic and the prophetic vessels. One thing I can assure you, that God don't really trouble your personality. When you are called to the prophetic, he calls you with that personality. Amen. You have some prophets that they have a, a good sense of humor. God called them with it. You cannot attack them because they can mm. make you laugh. Mm. <laughs> Uh, you're one of them, woman of God. Mm-hmm. Praise God. And you thank you for that. So you have some prophets that you come in their presence and, you know, like a lady come crying that, you know, she, they call and said, pray for this lady. This lady bought uh, 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 one of those talking belly bags, okay? Oh, boy, 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 and I'm the prophet. I'm going to make you laugh now, okay? <laughs> so she is a size 2X and somebody forced her into a size 16. And she ended up in the hospital, okay? Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so they call Providence Anna for prayer. And you know I am on the floor. You know. <laughs> no, I'm not not coming. Oh, I feel like I need to say... When you take this prophetic thing for a joke, man, you need to get this is and cut that off the woman. Hallelujah. <laughs> so yeah. some prophet has some different kind of character. Like, you know, I don't classify Jesse Duplinis as a prophet, but one day I was so angry because I never liked Jesse Duplinis ministry. It makes me angry. I don't think he take this God thing seriously. But I didn't know that God anointed the man to make people to laugh. Amen, amen. So one day I was having all kinds of battles and distresses, and I said, God, I turn on the TV and I hear the Holy Spirit say, do not change the channel. (laughs) And I sat down and I listened to that man, and I laughed until I was weak. (laughs) And the Holy Spirit said, that is what you needed. Yes. Yes. So you cannot, because somebody come and they are... Now, you don't think that you're excellent enough. You don't think you better watch yourself. You don't Amen. think that they can pull to you. You better watch yourself. Because yes. if God can use a raven to feed a prophet, he will use any person he wants to use. He is God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why many people missed it. Mm-hmm. As much as God was rejecting uh, Eli, he still used Eli to activate Samuel so that Samuel could know the voice of God. Amen. 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 And even though John the Baptist didn't do a lot of miracles, people of God, it had to be someone that activated Jesus. The foundation yes. was laid with John the Baptist. Everyone know him mm-hmm. as a prophet. Hallelujah. Yeah. And they know that God was with him, so they know that whosoever John the Baptist validated, that they are indeed the true people of God. So he took John the Baptist to activate Jesus. Somebody has to activate you. You're not a lone ranger. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The popular ideation of the prophetic ministry may intimidate you. 
But my goal today is, is not only to make you feel comfortable, but to demystify the prophetic by taking you from a paradigm of religious superstition to kingdom effectiveness. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Religious superstition is one that says, oh, I hear this about this sister. I hear that about that sister. Are you giving someone the tool necessary to bring about kingdom effectiveness? Yeah. Is that your role as a prophet? Is not the prophetic to exhort, to edify, and to comfort? When you are not working on the power on the God's paradigm, what you will end up is taking people off course. The end result will be that people will be off course, their life will be interrupted, you're influencing them wrong, you're not mentoring them to know the God that is in them, and that you are not helping them to develop even the depths of clarity in their own lives in hearing from the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 One level of prophetic gifting that we are going to explore in this course is that of prophetic impartation. That is what happened to you when you come in the midst of a prophet, the mantle that that prophet carries. When you're around him, you can feel that impartation. Yes, yes. Have you ever been to a powerful prophetic meeting or a church service and, you know, you, though you have never have a prof, someone prophesied over you, but you felt as though you yourself could prophesy, the anointing is so tangible upon you. Amen. Amen. Because you have tapped into the mantle Amen. of the person that is on the house. Mm -hmm. And when you come into that proximity of the prophetic mantle, the power of God in that person's life and that person's anointing will leap on you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When you come into that connection, the anointing that is on that person's life will find a way to leap on you. That's why many of you talk about the electricity running through your body. Amen. 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 And so we are on the phone, we are not in a corporate setting like a house. But the mantra that I carry, when you come in my presence, there must be an impartation. You must feel the weight of what I am carrying. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 opening my mouth. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. And I lay hands on your makushi. Just looking at you. Hey. Yeah. Glory. Just look at, just look at you. Oh. Right. Thank you, woman of God. While you're in this course, the month of God on my life, people of God. Hey, Jesus. The month of God that is on my life is going to arch from who Christ is in me to who Christ is in you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. The result is what you get when you take this prophetic course. You actually do have having the opportunity to test drive in the prophetic. Ah, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. At the end of the Kukama Pastor Glenna, yet I come now, Robo Kosika. Something I say activated the Christ in your mark of Shatai. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
Now who look what you sense God is saying, woman of God? Come on. Remember you're in a comfortable environment. Come on, woman of God, open your mouth. What do you hear God say? A fire. What do you sense the Father is saying to you? I hear the spirit that the fire will quench everything. Nothing will be left out. A fire will be quenched. Continue. I want to hear you clearly. <laughs> All right, she's under the anointing. Come on, prophet. The spirit is subjected to the prophet. Okay. Amen. Amen. Let her, let her speak. Fire, as by fire, we yes. quench everything in you. That fire will come forth from your mouth. My yes. God. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's a word for the prophet. You hear what God says? <laughs> Continue, Pastor Dana. There's more. Why don't you speak? <laughs> Just open your mouth. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Just open your mouth, and the fire will come forth. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That is accurate. Don't stand on your belly. Cushion the cushy. Father, I ask that you activate her from the minor prophet to the major prophet. Yes. That you will escort major prophet also into nation. Thank you, Lord. Receive it and receive your book, because I see the angel giving you a book for you to write. Write down the words that are going to come during this course, in Jesus' name. What a powerful Hallelujah. message. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen, Lord. I told you, God says we are going to get the mantle of Elijah, the Elijah anointing. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, you and I don't, you know what, we, we just worship God. Can we just Hallelujah. give God thanks? Hallelujah. We only have Hallelujah. a few more minutes to go. And this prayer is only for two Thank hours, you, and I want us to keep time and worship for His goodness. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just want to bless you. We just want to give you praise. We thank you, Lord. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of God, I worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. Oh, Pastor Dana, what you get was straight from God. Because God told me today that the, the prophetic anointing of Elijah, and you and I don't talk, so, and if God is telling you that, that is telling you. And for those of you who don't understand, when you come in the, the company of the prophet, what is on me automatically falls on you. 
Amen. 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 You Amen. are drinking from a clean, pathetic yes. stream. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. And that's why God also yes. bring the word to the prophet. You hear what the woman of God said? Just open my yes. mouth. Mm-hmm. Yes. That was yes. not me yes. talking. And God will send other person to validate that you are called by him. Yes, Lord. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> God. Thank you, Father. Only open your mouth, says the Father. Those of you need to come out early next week. It's only two hours. We start from five and we end at seven on the eye because Prophet Anna is getting words to the nation. I will tell you when I'm finished. Amen. I want you all to pray for me, especially Mother Ayat. Amen. Mm. Amen. When you come into the proximity of the prophetic mantle of the prophet of God, the anointing is going to leap on you. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, thank you. Be one that prays and not one that divides. Hallelujah. A singer, a very famous singer, contacted me, telling me, oh, she has been abused by some of the prophets in Jamaica. We are not to abuse people with our words. Amen. We are called for edification, exaltation, and for comfort. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. How do I come to experience the prophetic calling? I told you, you can read it. It was a very early age. And many times when God began to tell me things, nobody believed me. Like last two weeks, the Lord had me to prophesy about Texas. Don't you see what's happening in Texas now? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Who was on the prayer line when that prophecy was given? I was. I was there. I was. Who was on the prayer line when Virginia was given? I was. Selena. Those two prophecies have come to pass. Amen. 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 And this is not just on the line now. This is off the line. God wants to release us into Hallelujah. our prophetic destiny. If I say nothing else tonight. Amen. Ask the Holy Spirit to activate him in you. I'm coming down now. And so I'm going to pray for you. And so this is the series that we're going to go through next week. We're on the same time. I appreciate those that that are coming on to come on exactly the time appointed because we don't want to miss anything that God is doing in this season. Amen? Amen. Amen. Any question? Did everybody understand everything for the first session? today. Yes. Amen. Are you Amen. aware that this is six weeks consecutively that we will be on? Amen. 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 And at the end of the course, you will receive a certification of completion and a prior shawl anointed by prophetess herself in the fasting. Amen. Hallelujah. And I will mail those out to you. Is there any question? question before we go, please? I have, I have one question. Go ahead. I I don't know if we do it already, but there's a part where I read where you said that um um it said but when a prophet is young that a prophet needs a mentorship because many times a prophet could pr- say something or pray something and people will be hurt. Mm-hmm. I, we don't reach, I don't, we don't reach there yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, that will follow next week. We're gonna we're gonna elaborate why we wanna stay in the paradigm of the New Testament and not the hold. We're gonna elaborate why it's so important that prophet walk in humility and not to use their gift. That's what we we're talking about in brief, but we didn't go into that yet. Why we should not use our gift to, 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 to destroy people and just prophesy from ears and to and to think that we are anything great. Prophet must display the characteristic of a humble servant. So we're gonna dive into that in our next session, woman of God. Okay? Anyone else? 
Any question concerning the, 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 the lesson, please? Okay. Uh, Prof, good, night, good evening, Prophetess. Yes, um, good evening. Um, there can be also a transfer of the anointing to from the Prophet also by like clothes or items, like personal items belonging to the Prophet could be a rug and stuff like that. Most right. definitely. You see, in the, in the apostle's life that he was, demons were coming out of people for, for through handkerchiefs and stuff like that. So yeah. that's what you're going to get when I send a pious shawl. It's an importation yeah. of the anointing that is on the ministry. Hallelujah. Amen. Does that answer your question? Yes, Professor. Okay. Anyone else? Hello. Come on, feel free to say something. Come on. The only um, if anybody do have one, have another question. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, Pastor Greener was before. Wait, just a little. Go ahead, Pastor Greener. Um, in one of the sessions concerning Samuel, right? One of the what? Um, concerning Samuel. Yes. And um. Samuel, when Samuel was hearing the call of God, and he didn't understand it, and he went to Eli, he heard it more than once. Yes. And he went to Eli. What Mm -hmm. I'm saying is that um, Samuel went to Eli because that was the person that he probably saw as his mentor, right? Yes. And... uh, I'm looking at it, seeing as uh, Samuel was learning from Eli. Mm -hmm. At that point, Eli perceived it was God. Yes. And and right there, I I understand that Eli in that place had to be unselfish and have to be humble and nurturing to Samuel. Most definitely. He could have done it. He could have done something else or say something else to Samuel. But I, I look at it as an example for even me or anybody else to follow, because Samuel would have replaced Eli eventually. Yes. But, so Eli had to not show him right there, because mm-hmm. God would have God would have dealt with Eli, Eli if he didn't do the right thing, right? Yes. Okay. So what is the question? The question is that, as a prophet, we do we all all have to be obedient to God at all times. No divination, no putting self in between. Despite if you're hurting, you gotta do what God says. Uh, I, I I I don't accept a prophet that divines. No true prophet of God is a divinator. Divination must not be heard among prophets. I know you experience some of those kind of people, but they are not true vessel, or they have overstepped their bone and operating from another spirit. All prophets, prophets are not perfect, but they are supposed to be humble people. Prophet, we, 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 we did that at the intro. Of, of, of today's course. We mm-hmm. talk about prophet must only speak what God says. Mm-hmm. Isn't that what, what I say, people of God? Yeah. Yeah. If you're yeah. praying, uh, if you're a prophet or you're speaking what God says, there's no divination. Okay. You have to speak whether they will hear or forbear. Kabu Shandai. Okay. My question when the prophet is, tells the woman of Zarephath to give him the cake, yes. prophet can also speak out of their need because God wants to use them to bless you, to open mm-hmm. also a door for you. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have to break the scripture down into a chronological order. You cannot just take a one thing out of the Bible because there's precepts upon precepts and line upon line. Prophets cannot True prophets cannot operate from the spirit of divination. 
they have lost up their bones. They have gone into another realm, and that's mm-hmm. not of God. So they that's cannot function between two. It's either they mm-hmm. come out of the realm and serve God, or they go over on the other side. But there's no mediocrity. There's no mm-hmm. in between. God is absolute yes. truth, absolute righteousness. Woman of God. I'm sorry for bringing up that, but the reason why I wanted to get it clear is that mm-hmm. because they preach, that many times you find a prophet preach the correct word, mm-hmm. and deep behind the curtain, you will see that if a prophet see that another prophet is coming up, you steer them into the wrong direction, and I categorize this as a false prophet. Am I right? I definitely would do that. But what would you say? I, I don't know. I don't. I don't understand where you're coming from. But this what this what I will tell you. Okay. Any well, well, prophet that does not want to release people, mentorship people, and cultivating the God in them. I wouldn't even trust their anointing because you would want me just to depend on you. A true prophet do what I am doing and much more. Amen. Get people to hear God for themselves. That is what I'm trying to do here because I find out that we have so much people run into this television personality, run into this, and if they fail, you fail. You need to hear God for yourself. Amen. Thank you very much. So much people. When I come here, if you watch me from the time you know me, and this is going into... I know the back of almost four years and no mother I had for about that time. These people can tell you that this woman is pointing you to God. Amen. If you call me Amen. too often too, I may have to carry it to the Lord to find out if he's not talking to you. <laughs> because better than that, all of them know, I will point you to develop the Christ yes. in you. If Amen. anybody knows me on the prior line and knows me one and one, they know that I am that type of person. Amen. I am sending you scripture. And I am sending you your prior you book so for you, for you to learn to pray for yourself too. And I thank you so much. God bless you, my darling. In doing so, you cannot get people. Listen, you see, let me tell you something. Even some churches, they don't want to let people go because of orphans and tithes. They don't care about God's people. Amen. You think they do? A true prophet, a true pastor, a true evangelist is going to say, come, let me teach you. What I learned, let me impart this on you so that you can know Christ for yourself. Come on. Amen. That is the sole purpose that Jesus came. He imparted the Holy Spirit in the apostle, activate them, send us out to make disciples of all men. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, some prophets have what you call prophetic direction. Like mm-hmm. Elijah did to the woman at Zarephath. Go and bake me the cake. So I don't want to speak against none of those people out there. I want to tell you that I know what God tell me to do and have to abide in the era where it I am called. Amen. Amen. When you abide Amen. in the era of gifting, you don't get in trouble. Mm-hmm. When you step Amen. out of bound, then all hell break loose because you're operating in a dimension that God did not call you to. Mm-hmm. Amen. All right? Amen. So we're going to pray. Amen. Is there any other question? Question well taken because these are practical things that are happening out there in, in, in the ministry. And, and some unlearned, immature prophets just go out and make shipwreck of the prophetic, but not all prophetic people are like that. Amen. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Is there any other question? I want to make sure all arts are clear before we close this session tonight. Yes, Prophetess. Uh, this question just came to me as I was listening to um, the woman of God speak to you and the word came up, divin- divination. Mm-hmm. So my question is this. I know it's not of God. I know it's wrong, but what is it? I'm curious. You're asking what me it? what is divination. Yes. All right, so divination is, 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 is like divining from an infamiliar spirit or 
mm-hmm. or something that is not of God. Divination is not of God. You can read what happened to Saul and the witch of Endor. Amen. Which we brought that on a couple of weeks ago. She practiced nigomancy and, and summons enough the dead. Mm-hmm. So divination is a way where people contact with the spirit world not using the Spirit of God to source information. That is what divination oh. is. Oh, so people who hear from, like, familiar spirits, that that is divination, right? People who what? Like, people who, just like what you said earlier, people who send on um, uh, familiar spirit for information, that is divination. People who... Not only familiar spirit, you know, any other spirits that oh. exclude God oh, okay. that they get their information from. That is divination. Oh. Familiar spirit can give you information on any other source, any other tool, whether nigromancy, sorcerer, Ouija board, any other familiar channel, infamiliar channel that you, you use to get information about yourself and others, except using God, you're practicing divination. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You are some people... <laughs> They're using um, mediums like tarot cards, like, you know, the psychic here in America. Mm-hmm. With the board. Thank you, woman of God. Well learned and well studied. With the board, practice of seeking knowledge of the future from unknown supernatural being, defining and telling, making prediction. These are soothsayers, woman of God. You call somebody, they take up two cards, they rub two cards together, they tell you something, and they're divining. God curse divination. God angle it seriously in the scripture. So that is what is divination. The practice of seeking knowledge of the future from an unknown supernatural means or beings, deity. Mm-hmm. Queen of the coast, mommy, water, spirit, any other being or deity that you acquire knowledge from other than God, you are practicing divination. Amen. Does that answer okay. your question, woman of God? Yes, Pastor. I, just, I didn't know what it means. I just, no, man, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, but you have to suppose while you're answering, there's something more to ask. In other yeah, words, no, it that, mean, yeah, it mean <laughs> Yes. And one thing about those that work divination, they cannot stay in the present and the fire of God because the two spirits are contrary to each other. Amen. So when the fire of God comes to expose the spirit of divination has to run because it will not stay in the oh, presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If they stay in the presence, right, they will manifest, right? Then you, you were with me in New York and you see what happened, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> let me bring it to the pile. A lady came, she had a python in her belly. Hmm. We did deliverance on about 14 people. I was extremely tired. But when I came to her, the Lord said, there's a snake in her belly. And the snake woman lift up almost all the people in the church and start showing them one side of the church. Okay? Mm-hmm. I had to jump on her back. Because <laughs> no, we need about 10 men to hold on that serpent. Okay? Yeah. When the spirit of, I am a deliverance minister, and I know people who are operating on the familiar spirit. I know when you're Je- a Jezebelic spirit, there are first things that you taught when you're doing demonology, how to identify certain kind of spirit. I know spirit who manifest because they hear something and they come to challenge you. I know people who manifest that is not out of the spirit of God. The Spirit of God is a Spirit of truth. He is not sensual. He is not devilish. When the Holy Spirit 
overcome is easy to entreat. Only if you have another spirit, then that spirit becomes uncomfortable when he is in the spirit of the Lord's presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Satan cannot cast out Satan, said Matthew chapter 12. Mm-hmm. So if you are carrying the Spirit of God and somebody else have another Spirit, then the Spirit of God in you is going to war against that Spirit. And that Spirit will manifest. The spirit of error has to bow under the lordship of the spirit of truth. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Any more questions, please? Is there any other question? Come on, we're free. I love when you ask questions. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. <laughs> I'm on hold. Not hearing you clearly. Thank you, Father. Hello. All right. Since there's, there's no other question, uh, I'm promising. I don't. It, it may. It may not. Uh. It may not be of the course tonight, but. Uh huh. A prophecy is that also gifting as just like the spheres and the um, prophesy is all that in the same thing. Yes. Vision, um, visionary. Okay. Vision. All seers are prophets, but not all prophets are seers. The Bible says that we are to prophesy according to the proportion of faith. So, in, 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 in seers and prophets, they were pari pursue. But more comes from the seers, because all seers are prophets. Not all prophets are seers. Does that answer your question, woman of God? All seers are prophets. Uh, uh, vision, vision. Is it the same? Does it go for that too? Yes, because remember the scripture says... An other prophet, this was God talking to Moses. I spoke to them through dreams and through vision. But you, I speak to you face to face. So God oftentimes used vision with prophetic people. And we'll talk about that further down in the course. Okay? Okay. Okay. Any other question? Does that answer your question, Mona Yes, because I had, I was, uh, um, I know at, uh, at one point when you were saying, like, when you see your visions, if you don't see them clear, you have to ask God to show you clearly. And I was saying that I, I have visions, but I don't see them clear. But uh, uh, the other night, I didn't sleep. I was up the whole time, all night. I didn't sleep. And he showed me, um, as I stated before, he would always show me faces. Some mm-hmm. familiar, maybe not. But they were very clear at this time because they weren't clear before. So I, I'm thinking that he, he really, he, he, he's giving me that clarity now that I asked for, the clarity to really, it was real, I mean, picture clear, like, you know. Now that's good. That's, that's yeah. very good. That simply means that, as you said it, you said it rightly, that God is giving you a clarity in your vision acoustics. Right. So what you have you need to distinctify whether or not it's a open vision or a vision by dream. So is this a vision that you have like a pictorial open vision or you were asleep when it occurred? I, I was I was I wasn't asleep. It's just my eyes is closed. See I, he gives it to me when my eye is closed. I'm not sleeping or anything. I'm alert and I see. I see with my eyes closed. And he showed me faces, just faces all the time, faces, well, faces, is, faces. That is open vision. Yeah. I function like that too. My mother and a few of my spiritual uh, mothers, my spiritual mother in Cayman, she will just close her eye and God just begin to show her stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that is very good. That is very good. That, that's a very good gift you're developing. Because yeah. remember, you can sense, see, or hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. 
Okay. Anyone else? Exactly. So it is good to play and to be able to see, right? Uh, I'm not hearing you. Can you talk, can you talk up a little it, louder? So it is good to pray when you're praying for the prophetic gift. It's mm-hmm. to pray also to be able to see, not just to dream, to have dreams, but also oh. to be able to see or to see clearer mm-hmm. or to see if I can't see none at all. Most definitely. That's why each one of the course that we do, we do an activation because to activate you is, 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 is bringing you into something that may at one stage be in you, but it is dormant or you may yeah. have never operated in that yeah. area. So that's what activation is all about. So further down in the course, we activate the seers in you, we activate the ears in you, we activate yeah. the sensor in you. Because I have had that experience, like my sister was just speaking, um, where I would close my eyes. I, I think I, I said it to you um, that I, I call it a mental image, but you say it's not a mental image. It's a, a vision, an open vision, but I didn't know, so I just call it that. So, because it, it happened to me already where I'm not, I'm not sleeping, where I might be lying down on the bed and my eyes closed, I'm alert, can hear everything around me. And I might just get something like a, a flash. I see something in a flash. I remember one time I saw a woman in the mountain. And she stretched out her hand. That I was back home then. It was holiday time. And she was casting spell on, for accident to happen. It was like, like in a flash. And I knew in my spirit exactly what she was doing. Oh. So my, daughter, my daughter wanted to go. It was her birthday and it was a holiday. Because she born on the 6th of August, and it's Independence Day. But my husband said, no, I don't go out on holidays. He, he, so he said, I don't go out on holidays, because accidents always happen, or somebody gets drowned or something. So I remember I go in the room, and I lie down, and I close my eyes on the bed, and I saw a woman in the mountain stretch forth her, her hand, and I could see that the mountain was green, and she was casting spells. It was like a flash. So that is also very good. <laughs> Most part, what, what, what I sense very, very strong on the prayer line, one get a word, one get a song, one get a revelation, which is good. As, at, at least that is the elementary stage of being developed, cultivated, and matured. But the next stage now is to move from basically just getting a little glimpse and synopsis into a place where you can flow with clarity, precision, and fluency. So what I meant by that is that when God show us little bits and pieces, then you don't only look at it like, oh, I see a lady in um, the field chanting. God is trusting you with vital information that can stop a calamity for an individual or nation, a country, whatever. So what the next stage of that would be is to ask the Lord, how do you apply yourself to the information he has given? How do you apply yourself to the information he has given? Mm-hmm. For example, I'm sure he didn't just show you that just for you to see that um, that woman is invoking evil. God may show you that and wanted you to pray against that. So then when you're more mature and developed, then God will show you that, you know what, I don't only want you to see, but I want you to do something about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So you're going to pray and shift it. Pray, because every time God reveals something, His ultimate aim and goal is to redeem. So He didn't just show you that, just to say, mm. See, she's working. So what we do after that? So that all is in developing. You know, the Bible says that they know how to skillfully use their senses because they have to develop their discernment. So God is going to move it from that stage. And if that gift is dormant, he's going to reactivate you once you're called to be a prophetic person. And then he's going to move it from that one level to the next where you will see things and apply what God said to Jeremiah. Pull up, uproot, 
pull down, plant, and to build. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does that answer you, woman of God? Yes, Pastor. God bless you. Amen. Anyone else? Is there anyone? This is this is very interesting because that's how we learn, you know. I am a person, I love to ask a lot of questions. If I'm not clear about something, I don't want to leave with any, you know, any 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 form of confusion. I would like clarity. So you feel free to ask any question. And so we're going to close. It's almost 7.30. Is there any other question, please? I want to ensure that yes. everybody get a, a, an opportunity to, to ask any question that they are not clear on. Go ahead. Yes, prophetess. Um, God bless you, man of God. Uh, um, sometimes when you are sleeping and you see a woman, like, like yeah, the sister was saying, it can, can it be an angel telling you something from, yeah. from God? Um, you say, um, go deeper into what you're saying. And there's something I want to bring up before I answer the question. Yeah. Well, um, like every time no one, I, I close my eyes and this lady in a white, she always come in white and say something to me. So I want to know if there is an angel, an angel can, God can see an angel in a form of a woman just to tell you something. All right. Yes, it can go like that, but you have to try the spirit by the spirit. And here is how you try the spirit. Any spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ was manifested in the flesh it is Antichrist. So you need to play your prayer gear towards, is this the spirit of truth or is this an infamiliar spirit? God, do not, God does not choose the same way to relate or convey a message to his people. So the mere fact that this woman is constantly coming, we have to check whether this is a familiar spirit trying to, to come into your life to establish his throne there. Mm. So prayer should be prayed geared towards, Father, if this spirit is not of God, we bind it in the name of Jesus. Because God does not all true. You said every time you close your eyes, you keep seeing this woman. God does not choose the same method or way to convey his message to his people. So we have to check out that spirit to see if it is of God. Any spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ come in the flesh. It's not of God. It is Antichrist. Amen? Amen. Amen. Any other question? Is there any other question, please? <laughs> okay, so we're going to pray and end right now. It was wonderful today. Did you enjoy yourself? Did you learn anything? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Blessed Holy Spirit. The Ruach mm-hmm. Kodesh. Father, I love what you're doing. I love that you're bringing us to a place of clarity and precision in you, Lord God. And so, Father, we take authority over the powers of darkness, the dark decrees of the enemies, O oh God. We break the yoke of our neck and we burst all their bonds in thunder. Kibo Shatter. We ask, O oh God, that the apostolic and prophetic grace, Rabba Kushiti, will come from an eye. Hallelujah. The Lord will display his power in the land. Kabo Sata. The Lord will shake the nation and bring them back to righteousness. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes. Each person here today represents a vessel that you want to use for your glory. Makushanda. Let not the enemy Kobo Shatai exact upon them. Activate them, O oh God, as vessels mm. of honor. Activate them as prophetic vessels with integrity, Lord. Prophetic, prophetic vessels who are audacious enough to stand before evil, to stand before the workers of iniquity and declare the bedding of the Lord. Prophetic vessels that are operating in the integrity of the New Testament paradigm to exalt, to edify, 
Did you hear what I say? Yes, my brother, yes, yes, I hear you, okay. God did not give you the spirit of fear, but of yes. power and love and of a yes. sound mind. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank I you, said, yes. God did not give you, and you must not look any other source. Yes. Do not put your hands in iniquity to get any, any protection. Neither you nor your wife. It's uh, abomination unto the Lord. Yes. God is going to cover you and God is going to protect you. That saves the Father. Amen. 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 The Holy Spirit. Kabokoshatalikosa. Um, Stop fearing. You have you have asked the spirit of fear so long. Receive power and love and a sound mind. That's what uh, God gave you. Amen? Amen. 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 The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I love you, Jesus. Glory oh, to God. I'm going to take you to a deliverance session. I'll call you tomorrow in the, in the afternoon. Uh, I'll pray with you. Yes, thank you. Continue Amen. steadfastly in the word. Do not divert. I have to say this. The enemy will come and suggest that you get this or you get that. If you put your hand in iniquity, you are fighting by yourself. Uh, mm. God will not fight for you. Uh, uh, he said, get rid of your strange God and serve the Lord in righteousness and in truth. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you, people of God. Anybody else? We're going to go now. Mother Hyatt? Oh, she's off. So with that, I, I just say good night for now. And um, same time next week. And Pireland will be on tomorrow night. We're going to be praying. And this week we're going to do something different as the Holy Spirit leads. I'll be calling persons 
as the Holy Spirit leads. So God bless you. Continue to study to show yourself approved as a workman that mm-hmm. rightly know how to divide the word of truth and will not be ashamed. God bless you. Until next week. Shalom. Mm-hmm.